Steve Scalise is back in the ICU with an infection. Congressman Scalise has been in the hospital since he was shot by a left-wing gunman last month. We will bring you any updates when we have them. But first, the summer of scandal continues over at CNN. This time, the network is under fire for what some are saying could be a case of blackmail. Earlier today in an article titled How CNN Found the Reddit User Behind the Trump Wrestling GIF, CNN published a story about the person responsible for creating the now infamous video of the president, President Trump, wrestling CNN. According to the article, the network decided against releasing this Reddit user's identity because, quote, he is a private citizen who has issued an extensive statement of apology, showed his remorse by saying he has taken down all his offending posts, and because he said he is not going to repeat this ugly behavior on social media again. The article then went on to issue what appears to be a not-so-veiled threat. Quote, CNN reserves the right to publish his identity should any of that change. Now, CNN has denied any allegations of blackmail, issuing a statement that read in part, quote, CNN decided not to publish the name of the Reddit user out of concern for his safety. Joining us now with reaction to the latest embarrassment for CNN is Salem Radio nationally syndicated host Larry Elder and from The Hill, Joe Concha. All right, Joe, I'm going to start with you. You're, you're, you went to school for journalism. When, when CNN says, look, we are not publishing his name because we're concerned for his personal safety. But then they turn around and they say, but if he's bad, if he does anything like this again, we're going to dox him. Tell us what that means. Okay, well, it's interesting you bring up that point around safety because if he were to do something what they deem to be unprofessional or objective, then safety, screw it, goes out the window. You're right. on your own, pal, right? <laughs> right. Doxing uh, basically is exposing somebody who's otherwise anonymous on, on the Internet. Okay. Right. And what we're seeing here is a major international news organization getting into the business of shaming, of policing the Internet, of avoiding journalism in this pursuit because of a silly Internet video that no one is taking seriously but CNN claims is inciting violence against the network. You watch that video. That's not inciting violence. It's a stupid video of a thousand <laughs> stupid videos that we see on the, on the internet. Well, it's like a WWE. I mean, it's like a wrestling match. And then Donald did that. But Larry Elder, let me, let me ask you this. You know, you've got <laughs> this guy who did this, what they call a GIF. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, they hunt him down. They find him. The guy's apologetic. He's going to take it down. He apologizes for all of his prior sins right. in his life. I feel like the guy went to confession. <laughs> and the priest said to him, look... If you show up again here, I'm going to tell the whole congregation how bad you are. <laughs> and, and, it's, and, and Judge, it's not like the meme made him out to be a serial killer for crying out loud. <laughs> it was funny. Nobody takes wrestling seriously. It was funny for crying out loud. Suppose he had body slammed a Fox reporter. Do you think CNN would have made the same deal? Oh, I, I doubt mean, it. <laughs> are, are they a news organization or are they juvenile hall? Are they public relations? It's ridiculous. And I think Ted Cruz is on to something, Judge. If it came down this way, you apologize or else, that very well could be extortion. If he was apologetic and volunteered never to do it again, that's a whole different thing. So it depends on how CNN came around with his Deal. Well, we're going to talk about that in the next segment, but uh, I, I agree with you. And, and I'm going to ask you, Joe, I want to read what WikiLeaks put on Twitter. What WikiLeaks said was, quote, Trump was bad, but CNN is worse. They <laughs> threaten an amateur satirist behind a Trump video, make fun of us again, and will dox you. I mean, even WikiLeaks finds that this is unethical. So we're going to save the legality of it to the next segment. But the, this is unethical. Ethical. I mean, this is what you do, the right? Inter yeah, The Intercept uh, has a great writer, Glenn Greenwald, who you've probably heard of, and he said this is a dark turn for CNN. Glenn Greenwald is not a conservative or, or anything. I can't tell what he is. So this has become something where they're getting killed from both the left and the right. This was trending on Twitter, CNN blackmail, for most of Monday. So this is a pretty big story. And the reason why I think it's getting a lot more attention than if this were just one mistake that CNN made, think about the last couple of weeks, Janine, and everything that we've seen. Two major retractions at that network on stories involving Trump and Russia. Multiple reporters 
basing right. their stories on a foundation of one unnamed source. You have people in undercover videos saying that most of the CNN coverage of Russia is mostly BS, that uh, also that the president uh, is stupid uh, for a sentiment for a doggy do. Basically, you know, their own producers saying this. I could go on. New Year's Eve co-host Kathy Griffin fired for holding up a severed head of the president. Reza Islan, who hosts a show on that network, calling the president uh, a stupid POS. Well, clearly I could go on and on. So all this is bad <laughs> PR for right. a network that's trying to complete a merger with AT&T. And this kind of PR disasters, one after the other, is having uh, an effect on the integrity of this network. And most importantly, the perception. Michael Goodwin, who's a Pulitzer right. Prize uh, winning columnist, he said, CNN used to be boring and trustworthy. Now it's boring and untrustworthy. And you know, and, and uh, Larry, uh, go ahead. Uh, Judge, I was going to say, uh, had this been a man, would they have entered into the same deal? Or did they do this because he was a teenager? And if so, isn't that bullying? <laughs> <laughs> well, he wasn't a teenager. That, that, there was some misreporting about that. Yeah, they didn't know it at the time. But clearly, it's, it appears, Larry, CNN has a culture that is determined, so it appears, to destroy Donald Trump and to destroy him to the point where they are losing all credibility. And Janine, uh, Harvard did a study a couple of weeks ago saying that 93 percent of CNN coverage on the Trump administration is negative. Think about that. Only seven yep. out of 100 stories of the, of the segments that you see on there can be deemed positive. That right. is obviously showing an agenda. Larry, last <laughs> word. Maybe someday we're going to get an apology from CNN, you think? Maybe they're going to admit that they, that they mistreated President Trump. Uh, That's when you know hell has frozen over. Yeah, don't <laughs> hold your breath on that. Larry Elder, Joe Concha, thanks so much for being with us tonight. You and coming up, Senator Ted Cruz says CNN may have broken the law by potentially blackmailing the creator of a wrestling video President Trump tweeted. Greg Jarrett and Anthony Scaramucci are here next with rea reaction. And later, according to a new report, the Secret Service interviewed Kathy Griffin for over an hour about her bloody Trump head photo shoot. Doug Schoen and Corey Lewandowski will react later. That and much more as Hannity continues. Welcome back to Hannity. More on the allegations that CNN blackmailed the user who created the anti-CNN Trump wrestling video. Senator Ted Cruz actually tweeted out earlier today that what CNN did could be illegal. Joining us now with reaction, Fox News anchor and attorney Greg Jarrett and senior vice president and chief strategy officer of the Export Import Bank of the United States. Anthony Scaramucci. All right, Anthony, I'm going to start with you. You, I think more than anyone, have been a victim of CNN's fake news. You're a fighter. You took them on. Uh, you proved them wrong. I mean, they actually allege that you are under federal investigation for mm, having some for some collusion with Russian officials. An absolute lie. You had to put yourself to the task of, of you know, the, making it clear that it wasn't true. You could have sued them for a fortune and owned half the place. Why didn't you? Well, a number of reasons. I mean, as Greg was pointing out at the break, they mitigated the damages, but I also didn't think it was the right thing to do. Given the fact that you know I've had journalistic experience, I know that people make mistakes. Uh, this and is I huge. See, it's one but, thing to but, make a but, mistake, but, but to to identify but I, you is under investigation. But I, I see myself as working for the president of the United States, and so what is in the best interest of the president of the United States is for us to stay on the air and to prosecute or execute his agenda, to explain his economic policies, to explain his national security policies. And if I had gotten into a lawsuit with them, Judge, it would have led to me getting taken out of that position of advocacy. And so for me, uh, if you weighed those two things, that was way more important uh, because at the end of the day, I serve the president. You know, you have always been very rational and very reasonable, uh, although I suspect CNN is not playing in your home. Uh, no, I actually, you know, I, I don't want because I love Fox so much, but I mean, I'll tell you what, you have to watch them because it's like the Red Sox watching the Yankees. It's like part of your scouting experience, you know right. what I mean? All right, Greg Jarrett, all right. You've got Ted Cruz saying, hey, look, CNN should be looking at the Georgia statute because this is this is extortion. I mean, it's, it's yeah. like blackmailing. And what he's referring to before we get into the statutes is the fact that they said, look, uh, he's apologized after they dug him out. He's apologized. He says he's never going to do it again. He apologized for everything he's done his whole right. life. And if he does it again, uh, 
know uh, we're gonna right. we're gonna expose him, even though we know by exposing him, he is subject to a da you know it's, it's a danger. I mean, the guy is in danger now, a lot of threats. Think, what are the statutes? Think about what CNN has done. They have said if you, Mr. Reddit user, do something that we don't like, we're gonna publicly expose you to contempt and ridicule and scorn. That's a violation of the law, and Ted Cruz is right, only he cited the wrong law. The real straightforward law of coercion says you can't threaten somebody to coerce them into abstaining from otherwise legal behavior. It's an absolute crime. All it's right, also then, we're going to put this up all right. so our viewers can start looking at some of the statutes that you're referencing. The first one is coercion. Right. And in coercion, you're talking about you're talking about New York law. Right. And under the guise that. CNN has offices and does business in and New the York. reporter is based in New York so there are plenty of contacts in New York so that's the relevant law then you also have a federal law it's called conspiracy against rights and it basically says you can't threaten and intimidate somebody for using their constitutional right to freedom of speech under the First Amendment. Which is very similar to the New York law <laughs> saying you can't prevent someone from doing what they have a legal right to do exactly. by instilling in them fear that if they do it, you're gonna you're gonna subject them to hatred, contempt, or ridicule. All right, so then we've got the federal. But for the federal law, the feds would have to prosecute. The, the feds would have to prosecute it Except that, and you'll note as it's up on the screen, it requires a conspiracy. Uh, two or more people. Right. But this reporter didn't do this alone because contained in his story is the editorial statement policy. Uh, so clearly more than Kaczynski was involved in this story, thus the conspiracy, thus a violation of the federal law. And uh, the Georgia statute that that uh, Ted Cruz referenced. Yeah, that, that, I, I think it, it can apply. I know you don't a think a little so. bit theft by extortion of property, but under Georgia law, unfortunately, uh, property. property is defined as personal and real, and not your identity. Uh, yeah, but at the same time, I mean, the, the courts are becoming a little more. Uh, you could stretch it. Yeah, uh, engaged in, in right. you know applying it to co contemporary times. Now, um, Anthony, in terms of CNN, in terms of their coverage, what do you think is going on at CNN right now? Well, I think it's a cultural thing, and so I think what's happened there is, for whatever reason, they're chasing the president like he's Moby Dick. Uh, management there is Captain Ahab. It didn't end well for the captain or the boat at the end of the story, and so sometimes when you lose sight of your moral compass and your grounding of what you need to do in terms of your editorial coverage, uh, you're running amok now. And so hopefully this will bring the pendulum back for them and there'll be less than, say, 93% negative coverage, Judge, on, on the president. Because I think it relates to what they're saying about the president. So but, I think but, that's been effective for the president this week. But given the fact that there have been so many media corrections and retractions, it makes it clear, I mean, to I would think the average viewer that you know, this is coming from on high. Not everybody's going to violate journalistic standards, you know, so that they can just get a story out there. It's almost as though there is this prophylactic, we're going to protect you if you, you know, destroy President Trump. I, I think there's a rush to get these stories out without verifying the sources, without double checking the sources. Uh, but I think the good news is the bombs that have hit them recently will hopefully bring them back into some more journalistic oriented standards, more objectivity judge. And if that happens, that's better for the country, better for the president. Uh, I think they have to give him a fair shake on that network. And I think I think people are going to demand that now. Greg, what is the person who posted this uh, GIF, as they call it? What, do you, what is he thinking right now? Well, he's scared. You know, he doesn't want to be publicly exposed. He doesn't want his family and his neighbors and everybody to be converging on his home because he's at the center of this controversy. Uh, but the real controversy rests at CNN. And Anthony's right, his comparison to Captain Ahab, uh, whose hatred robbed him of all caution and reason. He became the personification of fanaticism, and that is CNN. For, for those of us that didn't take English literature, that is the guy that chased Moby Dick all over the place. Okay, right. Herman Melville wrote the story. And, and led well. 
it led to his own but it, demise. But it is a hatred. sign about hubris and pride and ego overtaking you and, and making you lose your judgment. Gentlemen, thank you very much for both the literary, legal, <laughs> and the educational input on this story. And coming up, according to a new report, the Secret Service interviewed Kathy Griffin in person for over an hour over her ISIS-style photo shoot with a bloody Trump head. Doug Schoen and Corey Lewandowski will react. And later, former Democratic Congressman Dennis Kucinich is here blasting his party's latest plan to try to impeach President Trump. He'll be here later tonight. That and so much more straight ahead on Hannity.